dude. Got him. Stay on him. Yep. I got him pinned. Big, yep. Biggin. Biggin. Biggin, biggin, biggin. So the buzz bait, the whopper plopper, and the buzz toad. These are what I would call the loud topwaters. They are loud, they are proud, they get the bass's attention, and guess what? They catch big bass all around the country, and I've caught giant bass using all three of these lures. But if you out there have not really had much experience with what I call the loud section of topwater lures, which one is right for your situation? Which one is right for your pond, your lake, your river, creek, or stream? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers no matter where you live and no matter what bass species you are targeting. So if that sounds like you, somebody who wants to advance in their bass fishing knowledge and skills, hit that subscribe button. Now, in order to talk about the buzz toad, the whopper plopper, and the buzz bait, I could do it all by myself. But guess what? That would be lonely. So we're going to be joined by a special guest right now. Who are you? I'm Tyler. No, you're not. I'm Tyler. Well, I'm Tyler. Can we both be Tyler? Sure. Sick. <laughs> For those of y'all who might not know, this is Tyler Berger from Bass Fishing HQ, a really awesome YouTube channel that specializes in making bass fishing instructionals just like we do here on TRF. So, so his channel will be linked down in the video description below. Make sure you go check it out. He has an Ohio perspective on a lot of videos. So if you guys are Northern anglers, I know I've got a ton of Minnesota, New York people here on the channel. You'll probably find some solace with this guy up in the, uh, what is that, the upper Midwest? What do you call Ohio? The Buckeye State. The Buckeye State. He's an Ohio State fan. We won't hold it against him, but I say we hop into talking about these three lures, starting with the buzzbait. The buzzbait is one of those lures that I feel like many tournaments aren't one on nowadays. You don't see a whole lot of stuff on, on live stream, Bassmaster, MLF, of guys throwing this thing. In the, but the days that I've had throwing a buzzbait, if it's on, it is on like Donkey Kong. Is that kind of your experience? Yeah, it, it really is. You know, it's it just seems like that buzz bait will catch a better than average fish. And you're right. I think that it's very a niche bait. You know, yes. where you find guys that fish them, they fish them a lot. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of people have kind of put it to the wayside. Like it's one of those original baits yeah. that people used to throw a lot. And now you have the ploppers and the other baits mm -hmm. where this still works, but now people just have other options. Exactly. So where would you find yourself throwing a buzz bait? You know, for me, the buzz bait, you know, there's there's a lot of different places you can throw it. Yeah. But, you know, I want to say that of the, the loud moving baits that you talked about in yeah. the beginning here, I think it works the best in muddy water. Okay. You know, muddy water is is something you don't always pick up a top water in. Yeah. You know, but I think that a buzz bait can work really, really well in muddy water, okay. especially if you're fishing it around wood cover, too, because a buzz bait, unlike, you know, a whopper plopper, yep. it can coat, it can, you can hit it right up against, you know, wood you can hit it right up against a dock it's exactly. going to come right through yep. and it's it's going to be just fine yeah and kind of going on off of that going into the retrieve of the buzz bait i love like you said bouncing it against the side of a stump running it and literally letting the blades hit the side of a dock yeah that is where i find most of my bites if i'm just fishing open water we're going to talk about the whopper plopper here in a second but if you're fishing around any kind of shallow cover even a grass flat where some of the grass is just sticking up a little bit whether you're in a pond or a lake uh the whopper ploppers treble hooks will catch that situation so the buzz bait is the way to go but it does sink. The one downfall of the buzz bait is that unlike most top waters out there in fact is this the only top water that sinks Besides, oh, it's, the buzz toe, but it sinks real slow. It's one of the few, I'd say, if any. Yeah, buzz bait is basically a spinner bait that just has a different blade that allows it to rise to the top of the water. And so due to that, you can't stop and go. It is a cast. As soon as it hits the water, if not right before it hits the water, you've got to start your retrieve back to the boat. But if those fish are in an active feeding, chasing down something mood, there's almost no better top water than a buzz bait. It gets vicious strikes. And I feel like that the presence, I talk about it all the time on my channel, the presence of the lure is there. Yeah. It's got a big skirt, it's got a big uh, blade on it, and it just pushes a ton of water that gets big bites. Yeah. No, and I think another thing that the buzz bait does that's a little bit different than the other baits is it does have a like shiny blade on it. That's right? true. And it so makes it, a really whiny noise. <laughs> yeah, it makes a, yeah, it makes that squealy whiny noise, but it has a little bit of flash. So exactly. sometimes if those fish maybe are more focused on bait fish, that flash, you know, in certain situations is gonna work better than some of those other baits. Now the lure that I feel like has overall replaced the buzz bait in most people's tackle boxes is lure number two, and that is the Whopper Flop.
So the Whopper Plopper is, you know, like you said, it's it's different than the other baits. It kind of like, like kaboomed onto the scene. Yes, and <laughs> it, you know, it's really kind of like a spook and a buzz bait put together, right? Because it's, it's hard plastic mm -hmm. and it has treble hooks, but it also kind of has that kick. Like you basically just wind it in yeah. kind of like a buzz bait. So that's yeah. kind of the biggest differences in, in kind of this versus a buzz bait. Yeah, yeah. But the great thing is you can stop that lure whenever you want. So if you're fishing next to, like I said, shallow cover or maybe an edge of a grass or a side of a dock, even open water, and you want to be reeling it and it goes plop, 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 and you want to stop it and maybe give it a fast rip. I saw Chris Lane, that's kind of when it exploded on the scene. Chris Lane at Toledo Bend was doing a stop and go retrieve uh, on the edge of some hay grass, and those fish were going absolutely bananas for the Whopper Plopper. But the great thing about the Whopper Plopper is that it does have treble hooks. So if you, I've talked about it in some uncut videos before, if you've got open water, of any kind, I'm talking about 20 feet deep or two feet deep, you're not dealing with any kind of snags, the plopper is the top water of choice for me, unless the fish are schooling, and I'm gonna throw a top water walking bait. When it comes to these three loud top waters, the plopper is the one. Now, up in Ohio, you have all the species of bass, right? Yes. Okay, all three species. In Texas, we kind of have small mouth, not really though, so that's mostly a large mouth bait for me. Explain to you people that live up north, when you throw a, a, a plopper for small mouth versus large mouth. Well, I would say that the big thing is really comes down to the size, especially when it comes to yep. largemouth and smallmouth. Yep. And this might kind of sound weird, but you know, the actual whopper plopper, they're some really small sizes. Mm -hmm. And they can work well, but I've actually sometimes had better hookup ratios with some of the bigger ploppers. Okay, interesting. And I don't really know why that is. So sometimes you think, hey, I'm fishing for smallmouth, let's fish a smaller plopper. And I'm not saying that it's not gonna get bit, yeah. but sometimes kind of that 110, you know, is better mm -hmm. at hooking up with fish exactly. than that 90. So, yep. you know, for me, the, the whopper plopper though in the north is, you know, if I'm fishing for smallmouth, I'm cranking the thing a lot of times. Gotcha. You know, and if I'm fishing it for largemouth, you know, a lot of times it's it's target casting. You know, I'm target. Totally. I'm, I'm going by a dock or a stump or down a grass line or yeah. something like that. Where the smallmouth, I could be on a big flat, really cranking that in, just trying totally. to get a reaction strike. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's it. the great thing. That again, differentiation between these two is that this is almost totally target casting. You're casting at a piece of structure you can see or just under the water. You can throw this over on an entire main lake point and draw fish up from deep water to come eat this yeah. thing. Now. I got a fly in my head. Now, water clarity. Do you throw this in dirty water like you throw the buzz bait? Now, I'm not going to say it's not going to work in dirty water, yeah. but I, it's just something to me that I have had better luck with the buzz bait. I think part of it might be, and this is just my theory, right? But yeah. the, the buzz bait, when you're bringing it through the water, the part that the bass actually hits mm -hmm. is underwater. That's true. Okay, so it, it, it goes underneath the water. And I've had a lot of fish in muddy water just slurp the buzz bait, where I actually almost feel them hit it okay. before I see them hit it, yeah. you know? And so I think that there's just something to do with muddy water and, and that, you know, the buzz bait working just a little bit better than the plopper. Exactly. Yeah. The plopper to me is a very, not very clear water, but clearer than dirty is when I pick up the whopper plopper. They are both amazing lures. You need to have both in your tackle box. But one that doesn't really fit, it's not comparable to really either one of these. And it is also a niche bait, but you need to know how to throw it because when these bass are on it, it is amazing. And that is the buzz toad. The buzz tone is definitely a lure that has been forgotten. I think by most anglers, I go by Bass Pro Shops and I see tons of buzz toads still on the shelf, which means a lot of guys are not throwing them. I think it's been replaced by the, the sprinkler frog. I think Booyah also made a frog, which kind of mixes the whopper plopper with a hollow belly frog. But the great thing about this is that it is a very subtle top water little plopper. So I, I know I said it, it, it's fits in the loud category. I'm sure that a top water popper, if you were to pop it faster and, and louder, it'd actually make more noise. But if you have to fish for fish that maybe are in really shallow water and they have been pressured all the time, maybe it's super calm outside, the buzzbait might cause a little bit too much commotion for them, right? Yep. 
Yep. Yeah. No, that's it. That's exactly right. That's the one thing that I thought of when you said a buzz toad earlier is yep. that it can be a very subtle top water, just exactly. like you're saying. Sometimes the buzz bait and the whopper plopper are just too much. You totally. know, if you have still conditions, you know, like even a day like today, we have yeah. very flat, calm conditions where we're sitting, even though it's cloudy and overcast. Yeah. Sometimes a, a, that buzz bait is just too much. Yeah. That plopper is too much for them, and they'll actually come up and hit that toad when they won't hit the other two. Totally. I can think of. Uh, I'll probably try to find some clips here. Jeff Sprague at Lake Okeechobee last year, or two years ago, whatever it was, the Bass Pro Tour, he made a top 10 on the final day. It slicked off for him. He couldn't catch him on the same stuff he was. He picked up this little Strike King Buzz Toad, and he went to smoking the fish. Yeah. I think they were like just pulling up to spawn, and for some reason, those fish had seen any everything else. They had seen chatterbaits. They had seen buzz baits. They had seen topwater frogs, and they wanted to cruise around and eat something that was very, very subtle, and that is where the buzz toad excels. I love throwing it over scattered grass. To me, it's really a grass lure. Yeah. You can throw it around shallow cover, around docks. Uh, I'm sure you can skip it as well, but because it does sink just very, very slowly, I'm not going to throw it over, you know, on top of a grass mat. You know, mm -hmm. It's not a hollow belly frog. This will not replace your hollow belly frog. It more replaces your buzz bait and your plopper when you are in a situation that has really pressured fish or fish that you know are, are pressured by the weather. Maybe the, the weather has a change. The, the wind slicks off. The sun comes out. You can still catch them on top water in that relatively open water. You just got to throw the buzz toad. Now, I've seen guys throw it on both a wide gap hook without a weight and one with a belly weight. Which one do you normally do? Um, you know, I tend to throw a lot of the buzz toads that I have mm -hmm. actually with like kind of a screw lock hook. Got it. So the, the reason that I throw that is I've just had better success at the longevity of the bait, okay. basically lasting longer. Got so it. as far as weight goes, you know, I, I tend to throw that buzz toad weightless most of the time. Exactly. So just with that hook, yeah. um, sometimes you're right. You can use a little weight on the hook to get a little casting to distance. get, yeah, to get some casting distance. Okay. If you have a little bit of wind, you know, there's just some things that you might want to use it for exactly but again it is a lure that even though it's a small form factor you might not think it can catch big ones I, i'll put a clip at the end of this video here i lost a giant just in the immediate post spawn on the edge of some lily pads i think he got off yeah he got off dude i couldn't get him out of there oh i couldn't get him out and then caught a six and a half pounder and a place that a buddy of mine had just thrown a bigger swim bait, like a paddle tail swim bait, mm -hmm. and I had just thrown a topwater hollow belly, and I was like, you know what? I, I have a feeling there are fish here. Turns out there was. They just wouldn't hit something that had a bigger presence. They wanted something with a smaller presence. So that right there was the loud topwater lures. We got the buzz bait, we got the whopper plopper, and the frog. Enjoy some of these fish catches, and of course, subscribe to Bass Fishing HQ. We'll see you guys out on the water. There's one. Yes. Let's go, baby. In the corner. That is not a bad one either. Not a bad one at all. Bring him up in here. Yes, sir. Look at that chunker right there, folks. Look at that absolute chunker on the plopper. There's one. There's another one. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Fight him. Fight him easy. Thank you, friend. Gotta throw you a little bit. Heck yeah. Let's go, baby. There's one. There's another one. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. Fight him. Fight him easy. That feels like a nice one, y'all. That feels like a good fish. And he might just have it hooked funky. No. That's a nice one. Gonna bring him down over here. Fight him slow. Fight him slow. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, there's one. Hey, hey. That's a good one. That's a good one. About to be three bass. About to be three. <laughs> These fish are heavy and they are hungry. Well, Bubba, it's your lucky day. <laughs> PTL. Dude. Got him. Stay on him. Yep. I got him pinned. He's coming out. He's coming out. Big, yep. Biggin. Biggin, biggin, biggin. Yep. Come on. Come on, big girl. Where are you at? Coming up. Coming up. Yep. Ooh, buddy. 
get up here. I'm not afraid to horse you in. Okay, maybe maybe she's actually not ready for that. Goodness. Good pressure on it. Yep. <laughs> Got that post bond power, dude. Get in here, dude. Get in here. Gracious. I know it. Dang, dang. She's, She's not done. Okay, okay. Dude. Dude. Let's go! Dude. Oh, I haven't caught a toad in a while. Get you that. Dude, she's got, look at that. She's got a bluegill down her, down her gullet. Oh my gosh, bro. Well, everybody, mm. that is my first uh, toad in a while on the toad. Just a good old rivet frog. Wow. Oh, what's that? Six and a half, seven? Seven, yeah. Oh, oh Dude, my gosh. Don't, you don't, don't put a cold tag on that thing. No. Here, I'll put them in there for you. Oh. I can't even get the hook out. Yeah, it literally has a bluegill tail down its down its gullet. Dude, you stung that fish. Luckily, I got him in a good part of the. Uh... Yeah, you got him in the meat. Yeah, okay. Got it. Oh, you got it. Ooh, that's a big one. <sighs> Look at that belly, bro. Oh. Look at that belly. Yes. Oh. Good, Tyler. Oh. Good. Good. Dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. And who knows how big that other one was that I lost. Oh.